Howdy folks, how are you all doing today? Let's get started. Uh, I don't have a fancy PowerPoint presentation, but hopefully we'll spend most of the time in demos. The Geoman generator for Microsoft Teams applications, which is, I actually looked at the date for the first commit now. It's uh, uh, The first commit was made uh, the 3rd of March uh, 2017, so it's over three years old actually, this project. Uh, and it started out for as a solution to building tabs easier. Uh, and this, ever since it's evolved into building tabs for Teams, uh, building bots for Teams, building messaging extensions, a lot of other things as well. Um, and uh, over the last three years, a lot of community contributions has happened. Uh, uh, we recently had um, moved the, the actual generator source code over to the PMP repository. So now it's under the PMP umbrella, etc. But it all starts, if you want to get started working with Microsoft Teams, you start by going to aka.ms slash teams, which take you to the GitHub repo. There's a manual uh, and instructions, etc. And let's take a look at that fairly quickly. And uh, let's see if I can find the right browser. Here we go. This is actually the first commit, March 3rd, 2017. But if you go to ak.ms slash teams, you get here. Uh, there's a readme file on how to get started and walk you through that fairly sh uh, shortly as well. Um, if you want to contribute, if you have issues, etc., use the issues tab here, find something you can help out with. Uh, there's also a wiki, and we are in the process of moving that into better documentation. But there's some quick starts for you in here, the tutorials, how to build your first application. Uh, if you want to build in and SharePoint Online provider host the web part, we have that, etc. And also we keep sort of the change log of all the updates, etc. that's happening in here uh, go, uh, continuously. So let's go back to our, my presentation. And uh, the first thing you need to do, you need to have a, a PC or a Mac essentially to get started uh, with this. Uh, it's all built using Node.js. If you're coming from the SharePoint world, you should be very familiar that sort of the same kind of approach to scaffolding applications, but it actually ends there. So the, the reason, and I get this question often, why do we have a generator for Teams? Because you can build Teams application using SharePoint Framework. Yes, you can, but the only thing you can do with SharePoint Framework is sort of client-side tabs. The, the Geoma generator uh, uh, can build a lot of other things, specifically if you have those kind of business processes that require server-side uh, compilation or, or rendering and those kind of things. You want to hide your business logic, then you can build a server-side and client-side tab. That's also why I showed you the provider-hosted web part. If you want to build that kind of approach for, for SharePoint, then you can use the Teams generator. But also in the Teams application, we have bots, we have connectors, we have outgoing webhooks and a lot of other things. So that is the power of this. It combines all those into a, a, a seamless application. Uh, the, the second thing you need to do is install the, the Yeoman uh, tool, uh, the Gulf CLI and TypeScript, and install those three NPM modules. And once you have that, you can actually install the generator. And that's easy. It's like you just write type NPM install generator hyphen teams dash dash global, and you will be set to go. And also, we always keep a preview version out there with the latest and greatest features uh, and just append at preview to that one if you want to try out the latest builds. And, and yes, please do that. Uh, we have a preview out right now with uh, SSO support for tabs. Um, and, and we need all the feedback we can get there so we can make sure and to build stable uh, solutions. I will walk you through how to scaffold out a, a team uh, or team project uh, and uh, then we also take a look at the demo hopefully the demo works uh, the i would say uh, sort of good and bad thing right now the usage of teams is so huge so we are actually being throttled when when adding new tabs or adding applications so we have a backup plan for that uh, but let's see how things goes and let me first of all start off before i start scaffolding i'll actually start my application in the background so we have that do running and then we take a look at that later. But in order to scaffold a project, you essentially type yo teams. I will not run an npm install here, so I run it, you skip install, so we don't have to wait for all the npm package, etc. So just type that, and then it will take a few seconds for the Geoma generator start up and load. And uh, right now I'm using the preview on my local machine here, and just give me a few seconds. Hopefully it works. So this is uh, uh, very familiar if you work have been working with other gen, uh, Yoma generators. We get a set of questions, and uh, based on those questions, we scaffold out the project. So we need, of course, a name uh, of our solution. 
uh, we won't use the current folder that we're in right now to, to actually scaffold out the uh, files. Then we need to uh, give our application a name and we just use the default one suggested here. You need to have a developer name. I put my name in here. And then we have an interesting option here. So Microsoft Teams applications are, are packaged into a manifest and these manifests have a version and depending on what version you have different features. So what we're doing right now, we're actually supporting everything from 1.3 to 1.5, including the, the preview. 1.4 and 1.3 will most likely be deprecated in, in versions going forward. So typically choose the latest version or the dev preview branch if you want to try out the latest and greatest. So we choose the 1.5. There's some other questions here. I'm not going to walk you through all of them. Uh, th that's, this is the, the most important questions. This asks you for what kind of things do you want to add to your applications? So we have, as I mentioned, we have tabs, we have bots, we have outgoing webhooks, we have connectors, we have message extensions, and we also have localization support. So this is up to you to pick and choose what you want to add. But also, you, the generator is built in such a way you can actually run it again. If, say, assume you added a tab, but you want to add a bot later, or a, a, actually a message extension later, or a tab later, you can act, run it again. So we don't support all the different kind of options here. Um, of course, good opportunity for you to help out, but we support quite a few options, specifically around tabs, which are typically that you add multiple of. So uh, let's choose a tab and a bot here just for the demo. Uh, and then just continue and, and depending on your what would you essentially put in here, you will be uh, asked to follow up questions. So I'll just click them through here. One of the cool things we have, we already have built in an option for you if you want to include a test framework and, and some sample tests for you if you want to do proper testing. I'll skip that one for now. We also have support for application insights. I'll skip that one as well. Uh, then I get to my tab. I need to give it a name, I choose the default one here. I can choose between a configurable and static that will change from, from team and group to, to pers and personal uh, because the configurable one are the ones you can add to a team and the static one is the one you is a personal tab essentially. Let's choose a configurable one here. Then I can ch change uh, and, and choose where I want this to appear in a team or and or in a group chat. We just choose the default one again. And this is a new feature in, in 2.13 uh, preview. Uh, do you want to add uh, single sign-on support for this tab? Let's choose yes here. And, and right now, I'm gonna just going to use the empty GUID, but essentially what you need to do is you need to register a, an app ID in, in Azure AD, uh, which you should paste in here. You can always go back in and modify this later. It's in a configuration file. So all, I typically, when I build my projects, I just click through here and add those IDs later. I also need an application ID URI, the same kind of thing here. I would, can change that one later. Then we have a cool thing here for if you want to actually create that kind of provider hosted web part. So do you want to add this tab uh, to SharePoint Online? I can click yes here. Then I can choose if I want to this as a full page application or just as a web part. So let's choose a web part and click enter. Then I'm getting into the, the bot questions. I'm just click through them very fast here. Uh, and uh, so there's a lot of questions being asked here. I need to create that one shorter. And once that when I asked all the questions, it will scaffold out all the files for me uh, in, in using a, the, a TypeScript. Uh, so everything is TypeScript on the server side, the client side, and all the required files to build this. And of course, uh, you should run npm install, which I already done in a demo project here. So what happens is that you get a project that looks something like this. You get a lot of helper files, the uh, the Gulp files, the, the Webpack configuration, the TS config, etc. One thing that might be confusing if you're coming from the SharePoint world is that we use TypeScript both for the server side and client side components. That's why you see uh, two uh, different TS config files here, one which is used for client side and one for server side. The same kind of thing in the Webpack configuration, the one for, for client side and one for server side. Under source, uh, depending on what I scaffold out, of course, I get a manifest, and that's where the actual uh, Teams application is defined, and that's what you can create with App, App Studio as well. And one of the things we're looking into is an import from App Studio, so you can define your application there and, and import it into the Yoma generator and not running the actual generator, but importing that file instead. But in here, we see all the stuff that I entered, the, the tabs, the bots, et cetera, et cetera. You can also see we have these kind of replaceable parameters here. 
So while, while we're building this and, and actually creating that Teams application zip file, we're replacing those with parameters which are stored in the .env file. So this is where I always can go in later and add my app IDs for my bots, for my tabs, uh, SSO, and, and, and Grok and whatever. So yes, I will change this uh, ngrok auth uh, <laughs> token later. You also get the actual application. It's in here. Uh, we will have a bot, for instance, so we can take a look at the bot here. And this is an, my Hello Teams bot extending the Teams Activity Handler, which is uh, using Bot Framework 4.7. It contain, contains some sample code, but also depending if you add message extensions, that will be inserted in here. So we have quite a cool way of actually inserting a Java or TypeScript into your already existing class. So even if you modify it, we can insert uh, through the AST and the TypeScript uh, object model, essentially insert the code into your application without destroying it. We also have the, the client side web uh, tabs, for instance. So we have the, the Teams tab here with all the React uh, code that is required to, to create that tab. And all I then need to do is what I did in the background here to save some time. Uh, actually type gulp and grok serve and it will start my application and finally we'll see this when everything is hosted. And if everything works now, let's hope for that so we're not being throttled again. We can go into Microsoft Teams and upload our application into Team. So welcome to the team. I created this one just before the, this meeting. We go in to Sidler application, go into manage team, and uh, then we go into apps. And this is a sort of the same thing that happens when you do the sync from the SharePoint app, uh, app catalog, but we're doing it manual here. And uh, of course you can script this if you want to, but this is typically, uh, I need to upload the application once, then you can modify your application. Um, so the, the, the actual Gulp files is monitoring your files just as in with the SharePoint framework. So when you save the file, it will recompile, et cetera, et cetera. And typically you don't need to upload the manifest as many times. But what I need to do is choose the zip file. So we need to go to my code here, code demos, PMP, and let's you know, choose hello teams. And when I run the Gulp NGROC service, it also created that zip file in here. So I can upload that one. And this is the, the confirmed dialogue. Uh, confirmed dialogue. You have a tab in here. I have bots. I have messages, extensions, and click add to add it. And hopefully this works. It failed a couple of times this morning due to being throttled. Looks like I'm being throttled again. No, it did work. Cool. Awesome. Uh, just slow now. So what happened now is uh, since I had a bot in this one, I will actually first get a message in here. So a welcome message, and, and that's something we hooked up in, in the sample code. So you get that to start with. That's typically one of the things you should do as the best practice, uh, uh, that welcome card. And also to show you what we're doing in the background, you can see here we get the incoming post message uh, from the bot framework in here, and that's what actually sends this to the team. I also have a tab in this application. So we click on plus here and we can choose hello teams, which is my tab. And let's see if everything works. So we're loading the tab. I have some dummy stuff in here, just configuration. This is up to you. It's a web page. You can configure whatever you want in here. The difference here between SharePoint framework web parts tabs are that you actually do inside this actual dialogue here, the first dialogue, that's where you have the configuration. And then we click save. And actually it did work this time. So I wasn't being throttled. And also you see now we are actually typing out my name here. So we're using the Azure AD SSO features, um, the tab SSO features to, to get the graph information essentially here. And there's just a sample button and those kind of things. So you can start building with React. And we have some hygiene factors in here. Um, First of all, or most importantly, is that we actually, if you go to settings here, we support sort of the, the dark uh, and, and high contrast mode. So I switch to dark here, we'll actually get a dark experience of this one. So you don't have to worry about that. That's all built into the, the code that's been scaffolded for you. So that is how you get started building your applications with the, the Yo Teams generator. And we're looking have some interesting things coming in the pipeline right now and some great support from the community and the PMP community. Uh, we will do a big uh, new version called we 
call it version three with the big refactoring on the actual structure of the code and make it a little more lightweight uh, and, and more pluggable. Uh, so you can uh, switch in and choose if you don't want to use React, for instance, you might, might want to use something else or on the server side, you prefer to use AGS for the templating engine. So uh, all of that we're going to work on over the next few months. So I think I was on time there. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Victor. Really, really great demo on, on getting started because we, we really need to have this getting started demos as well. So people know how to catch up if they or understand the basics to get started on, on things as well. So um, we shouldn't assume that everybody has been watching on every single session what we're doing. So thank you for Victor for that one. Um, and AKA MS slash yo teams is the address where you can actually find uh, more information. And like Victor said, the wiki is right now uh, where the, the the guidance is. The guidance is actually, by the way, really great uh, already. Uh, and then uh, there's a more work being done related on getting the documentation more approachable. All good. So the samples and all the, whatever we have Victor showed, AKMS AO Teams, uh, you install the, the Teams generator and then you run the basic setup and follow up on the getting started guidance um, and you'll be good to go with that one. Mm -hmm.